This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online community with more than 13,000 classes taught by professionals in design, photography, and much more. You can learn many useful skills to advance your career or just have fun. Click the link in the description to get unlimited access to Skillshare for free for two months. If you like the service, then stay for around 10 bucks a month or cancel with absolutely no obligation. Click the link in the description to get started. What is happening everyone and welcome to my After Effects tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to create 3D typography in After Effects. And what you're seeing right now on the screen is what we're going to be talking about in this video. So as you can see, there are many variations that you can create for this project. And this looks good on promo videos, YouTube videos, lyric videos, so many different places you can use this type of technique. And the best thing about this is that you can create many, many variations, right? So uh, there are going to be many things that you can learn from this video, like how to work with multiple cameras in your scene, how to uh, match eases of different, uh, you know, uh, keyframes and animation, how to set up a scene like this, so like the typography uh, before you start animating it, right? So how to storyboard it, right? And um, how to, uh, you know, apply, uh, you know, position and mask reveal animation animation on a text when it is rotated like that in 3d space so many different topics that we are going to be covering in this video so i hope you guys enjoy have a good time and follow along uh, i'm going to be giving away this project file uh, in the description so it is for free and i created this in like 10 minutes so it's not that great when you compare it to my product uh, promo but uh, considering that this is a 10 minute project and this is just for you guys to understand how the typography works and uh, you know sort of open it and see you know if it's looking good or no and uh, you know maybe maybe what you could do better right so for a 10 minute project this is not that bad and this is something that we're going to be creating in this video as well so I just want to give a quick shout out to myself uh, and my product that awesome people this is available for purchase on videohype.net so I've taken the time to create 71 different scenes and 50 of them are compatible with Premiere Pro right so a very useful pack and as you can see many different variations many different colors they look good and uh, you know you can write everything on your own um, you know there is after effects version the the premiere version and uh, you know if you guys uh, can do it if you would like to have this then you know you can head over to this uh, url i'll have the link in the description and if you are purchasing it you're, you're going to be helping out the channel a little bit and i'm going to be very grateful for that so thank you and uh, let's get started so I already have created my new composition over here uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my text tool from right here and start typing something so uh, just a quick shout out that the the font unisons the one that is being used over here this one and uh, the one that was used in the project uh, be bass new these two work really well with this kind of thing so I'm gonna be using that and I'm gonna just type in 3d so you can work with other fonts it's not that you know it's it's you can like you know you don't have to use other fonts but uh, be bass new works really well and I'm gonna take this to bold so this looks good to me next I'm gonna change this into a 3d object by clicking on this cube button right this way we have access to the uh, the 3d rotation tools right and I'm gonna be using the move anchor point script so also really important that awesome people I'm gonna try to do, uh, redo this entire animation without using any scripts but if you have scripts like uh, text evo or ease copy those are gonna be very handy so when I was creating my video hive project I was using them but for this project I haven't used anything and for the tutorial I'm not gonna use any scripts either so getting started so I have my text over here 3d uh, 3d and I wanted to say uh, kinetic right so this is good now what I'm gonna do is, is I want the move anchor point to move this anchor point right here so I'm gonna click over here it's a very useful script it's for like two three dollars so uh, a very small price to pay for the speed upgrade that you get in your workflow it's really cool you know consider purchasing it you know and uh, yeah so I want to rotate this in the 3d space so in order to set up the scene right we're gonna need a camera so I'm gonna create a new camera and I'm gonna to come to this a little bit later, the different settings here. So just for now, create a new camera, rotate it in your 3D space like this. And I'm gonna actually delete the camera. Let me just create another one. Um, okay, so we have our 3D camera right now. And what we want is, we, is 
is I want to uh, rotate the kinetic word like this. So I would never, uh, I mean, I am really, you know, against the idea of using the on-screen rotation tools like this, right? Don't do this because it's using the orientation. So as you can see, if you look in the timeline, you can see that it messes up with the rotation where it's adding different values for no reason. And even this one, we're not having a proper account of how many, uh, you know, pixels and you know rotation values are we moving in. So I really don't like doing this. I prefer working with the Y rotation from here, right? So the screen rotation it doesn't work very well and it messes up your scene. So I'm gonna make it minus 90 like this. And as you can see, or at least if you guys you know can see over here um, the camera is not helping me out a lot with the perspective right like okay we can understand that yes this is facing that side and this word goes this side but the camera is not really showing that to us and the reason is we are using a very high preset millimeters the mm is uh, you know it's it's very high so what i would recommend is that if you're working with this kind of project try to work with anything that's below 24 so these three settings work really well so i'm going to create another camera and this time i'm going to go for say 20 mm and you will really see that oops sorry this is now giving us a lot better perspective right so the perspective is uh, you know more defined in this camera and this is what we have right so 15 mm and then 35 mm or i think sorry 20 mm sorry so 15 mm would be even better so uh, think about it okay and try to work with a lower mm camera all right so this looks good i am you know with a 20 mm preset uh, next thing is to animate now in I would uh, you know never recommend you guys to animate directly on the camera That is not a very smart thing to do. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create uh, an, an orbit null. So we're gonna right click Camera create orbit null this way we get an uh, a null object and we can do all our animation over there and what's gonna happen is is that we can even get the freedom to move the camera around because there are no keyframes on the camera so this way we can move the camera around and see you know if we like this shot you know we like it from here we like it from the top we like it from the front and do all that fun stuff and the animation is preserved because it is done on the null object so getting started I'm going to basically create uh, my second animation so what I want is I want my this so I want the shot to be like this so from 3d it goes to kinetic okay so I'm going to start the animation on position for the null and for the rotation I'm going to choose the Y rotation so I'm gonna press the U key so this way I only see the two axes or the two values I'm gonna move ahead in time to about one second and I'm going to use the position value to rotate this better so as you can see and uh, I can move different values over here and you can see that I, I actually don't remember how this works right what I actually like to do is I just uh, is I just like to mess around with different settings on different values and see and if something goes wrong I just press ctrl Z so you know no harm done and this way I can work a lot better and see what works best with the project right so we have 3d then it goes kinetic superb all right this looks good now I'm going to add some ease to this and this is where things are going to get interesting okay so if I add ease to it right now and if I do this you're going to see all right this looks good but the problem is that the 3d word shouldn't be at the start so you basically need to create an in animation for both of these uh, words right so I'm going to take these keyframes I'm going to move this ahead in time to say about one second right and I'm going to choose the null object to basically reveal the 3d word to us and the kinetic word to us so the easiest way for me would be to push this up right something like this and then we're having this problem now so how to fix something like this uh, the problem is being caused because of this whole curve in the graph and whenever you're facing this kind of problem or some people what I would say is select all your keyframe uh, uh, your keyframes in your position right value do a right click and go to keyframe interpolation and change this from auto bezier to linear click OK and you will see that it just becomes flat now 
right so now if you were to play it it's gonna be it comes down it moves like this all right but the speed of this is a bit of a problem because like this you can see so let's go into the graph editor and see what's up with the ease uh, and as you can see yep there's a big problem this curve can be better so I'm going to select this and I'm going to move it towards the left right so this way if you play it now it comes it holds and then we have the nice rotation right okay this looks nice this looks nice but um, what I don't like in this part now is this part of the graph right here that the that the spin from 3d to kinetic is very fast uh, I would prefer it to be a little bit slower and then for it to pick up speed in the middle of the animation so if I change this from this to this it's gonna get, take all this time to slowly rotate and then there's gonna be a speed up right but when you do this you will see that there is a problem with the eases and you know because y rotation is so small you may not have to see it properly you'll have to really zoom in and you can see that the peak of the position the purple line is a position it's right over here but the peak of the uh, the green line the y rotation is over there so how do you fix this what we'll have to do now this is where a script like ease copy would be really handy where you're copying the ease of the keyframes and you know pasting it over but since we are trying to do it without any scripts uh, it, we can take a little bit you know more time to understand how this works so in order for you to adjust the ease of the green line click on the green line and this way you can adjust the graph like this right and you'll have to go in zoom in a little bit and see if this is matching or no and in my opinion this looks good let's see how it looks in the animation there you go so this is how you know when you don't have a script in hand you know this is how you can uh, you know uh, adjust uh, adjust the eases so just go keep your CTI on the peak click on the line and the graph that you want to adjust and this way what's gonna happen is the handles are gonna pop up for the line that you're trying to adjust so for example if I wanted to adjust the green line like I did before I'll have to click on the green line and you can see that the handles that pop up now are gonna control the green line right same thing with the purple one if I want to change that okay, I'm gonna click on it and the handles are gonna appear that are gonna only adjust the purple one right so good tip to keep in mind I'm gonna show it's gonna help you out in your projects and uh, yeah this looks good to me so the word 3d comes in and then we change to kinetic all right this looks good uh, now what we can do is because since we have animated the null object we can take the camera tool and we can move things around like this and see how things work right something like this so 3d kinetic so the animation is not going to be you know disturbed because it's done on the null object and right now we are only positioning the camera right so we can try this 3d kinetic all right this also looks good but I'm just gonna press ctrl Z a couple of times to get back to my original place right all right this looks good to me uh, you can also rotate the the camera itself for you to have a different and an interesting effect sort of like this 3d kinetic right so 3d comes in kinetic super this looks good to me and uh, next what we can do is in order to have a little more uh, better animation so this is a good intro part for the 3d word but for the kinetic you can see that we already have a word coming in so it basically takes away the show that we're going to spin and then the word is going to be revealed right so what we can do and I'll even actually change the color of this right to a different color like that just you know it works a little bit better so 3d kinetic okay and we can adjust the scene like that too 3D kinetic okay uh, now what we can do is we can uh, give it a little bit of a mask reveal so this is going to be interesting because how do you animate a mask when uh, you know you already have camera animation 
uh, you know, in your scene. Now again, uh, you know, when you have scripts at your disposal, something like text evo can be very handy in these situations. But again, we are trying to do this without text evo. So what we'll do is we'll create a new camera. So the problem, the, the, the whole problem is that we have something, we have a camera which is being animated by the null, right? So we need to see it from a set of eyes that are, that are not being animated. So we'll create a new camera, same preset, and we'll basically just want to have like a vantage point over the full scene. And right now you can see that here's a camera and it's being animated, right? So we want to see it from a vantage point uh, where, you know, things are not moving. So this way we can adjust the things quite easily. So we are right now working with camera three, right? And we can add the mask to our text layer like this, right? And what we basically need is the mask to not be animated, right? So as you can see, like this. So I'm going to apply my rulers right there. So we basically want that even after animation, the mask should be static and it should, uh, you know, keep in touch with this contact point. And we'll even keep one like this, right? So this is how it should be. Now let's do some position animation or some people. So start the position animation, move ahead in time to two seconds. And we basically want it over here. So we'll come back to the first keyframe, move the mask down like this, right? And uh, again, the problem is that the mask is being animated. Right now we just gave position to the text layer. We didn't give it any animation to the mask, but the mask is being animated. So we'll have to give more animation to the mask so it stays static and it stays at one place. So I'm gonna press the M key for mask path, shift M so that I can see the position and the mask path. Start the animation, move back in time, and then I can just select the mask like this and I can move this up right and i'm using my uh, key uh, key uh, you know arrow keys to do this on the keyboard and now if i was to add ease to this f9 something like that right if we play it we have this animation right uh, but keep in mind awesome people that our final animation is going to be in camera 2. So let's see how it looks over there. And I think we're going to have some problems because, okay, no, this, this worked out quite nicely. Let me, let us see the full thing again. And the reason I was worried about this whole thing is because this, uh, you know, keyframes were, I think, not syncing up with these keyframes. So try to sync them up. And as you can see, there's just a little bit of difference. So maybe it didn't matter because of that. But otherwise, try to see that your mask animation uh, matches your, uh, you know, your, your reveal animation. That's way, that, that way, it's going to look a lot better. So this is my tutorial on how to create 3D kinetic typography. Of course, awesome people, you can add more text to it and you know keep on animating it like I have done in my previews. Right? So you can you know add rotation to this. Uh, you know, uh, try to create different and unique approaches. So this is there. And I have created many different scenes in this project. So please head out uh, to this link. I'm going to leave a link to this in the description. Uh, you know, go check it out. And even if you're not purchasing it, you know, head over to this link so you can get a few ideas on how you can create interesting shots and interesting animations. And if, you, if you're there for, you know, for your demo reel, this could be a good inspiration piece as well. So thank you so much for watching my video. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned how to do this uh, in After Effects. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to the project files in the description so you guys 